Hi, my name is Hunter Freeman, and I am working on a .NET NuGet package, which is a text editor written using Blazor. In front of you, I have opened the demo website, which there will be a link to in the description. You can visit this website yourself. It is written with WebAssembly, and so you might have to clear your cache because you might have a previous version of the website cached. Additionally, the public repository will be linked to in the description of this video. So if you go to the public repository and then you scroll down, you can find the link to the demo website there as well. And as well, you can find on the public repo the source code that I will have open in this video and various documentation on how to set up the Nuka package and such. So we can see here, I have the demo website open and I'm showcasing the CSS syntax highlighting. In this video, I will be continuing what I had talked about in the previous video. The previous video I went over with pseudocode, how I am going to be doing the syntax highlighting for JavaScript in regards to comments, strings, and when a keyword is within a comment or a string. So on line two, there's a comment. This should be green, uh, for example, with Visual Studio dark theme. So that's what I'm referring to here. And currently keywords are erroneously being syntax highlighted when found within a string or a comments because it's a very primitive uh, way of syntax highlighting the keywords currently. On line two, I type the word let, which is a keyword. I hit space to trigger the syntax highlighting. And you see within this comment, we're getting syntax highlighting for keywords erroneously. So that's what this video will be. It will be the implementation of that. Whereas the last video was just the pseudocode of what's going to be done in this video. So let's get started. I'm going to go back to open up Rider, which is an IDE that I will be using in this video. So I'll start off by closing all of my files and collapsing the solution explorer. So you can get an idea of what files I'm looking at within the solution explorer. And if you were to clone the public repository, for blazor.text.editor. That is what I currently have open. That is the solution that I'm looking at. So in the solution, there's a folder for the unit tests named blazor text editor tests. Inside of that project, there is a folder named lexers. Inside of lexers, there is a C sharp class for Lex JavaScript tests. I go to the top of the file so that we have some context as to where I am. And very quickly, what we talked about in the previous video is all of the unit tests for the Lexing are in this folder. And there's a Lex C sharp tests, Lex CSS tests, Lex F sharp tests, and so on for all of the languages that I'm going to support. And there's example text that is being used for these unit tests that are public const strings. So I F12, we see here at the public const string for the example text that's being used. And I'm also rendering that when I have the website running so that I can see visually what these tests are looking like. I make an array of every location that a keyword appears in the example text. So I'm saying starting at character index 126 inclusive, that is the first character that represents this keyword that I'm referring to by this text editor text span object. 
And I'm saying that the ending in index exclusive, which is to say one character after where it finished, is character index 128. When you take the ending index exclusive and subtract the starting index inclusive, you get the length of the token. So we're seeing here that this is a keyword of two characters long. So let me alt tab to the website. I'll open it up here. Here we see I gotta clear my cache with control F5 because I'm seeing an older version of the website. I go to the JavaScript example and if I use shift key and scroll down to scroll horizontally, we can see on line two, so this is the start of line two, at the very end, the, the keyword in appears in this comment. It is erroneously syntax highlighted as a comment. And that's wrong because it's part of a comment. So contextually, it should not be treated as a keyword. And we can see that's exactly the text editor text span that is being referred to on line 18. These, that two character long keyword with the text of in, it's got a declaration by of one, meaning it's gonna be colored as a keyword. So this test will eventually be changed, but at the first thing I wanna do is duplicate this Lex keywords text, this Lex keywords test, because I want to see when we're done that this test fails and that the duplicated version, which is not going to include the in keyword, which was the first entry, we're not going to include that one in this Lex keywords more accurately test. I want this one to pass. So what we'll do in this video, like I said, is firstly, we're just going to go through and do the comments, the, str the strings, and then at the end, we can see that the Lex keywords will fail, which is the old version that was not accounting for comments in which you shouldn't count keywords that are within comments. So, and then we want this new one, which we made last video, Lex keywords more accurately, we want this one to pass. So the, the old one has the in keyword from line, from a character index 126 to 128. And you can see the, the new method just does not have that uh, keyword there. So let's get started here. This is exactly uh, the place that I left off from the previous video. So I go down to the razor lib. I go down to analysis because this is where the actual source code is for all this lexing logic. I go to the JavaScript folder and I go to the text editor JavaScript lexer.cs. If I find the usages for this lex method, you can see in this Lex keywords unit test that we were just looking at, we are invoking after we make these expected keywords, text editor text spans array, we make an instance of a text editor JavaScript lexer. We invoke JavaScript lexer dot lex and we give it the text, the example text. We do a where to get only the text editor text bands that represent keywords. We do an order by just to make sure that it's coming back in the same order every time. And then we assert that the expected is equal to the actual. So F12 to the Lex method. We want to go to the parse text method because the text editor JavaScript Lexer invokes the parse text method, which is located on the JavaScript syntax tree class. And it passes to the JavaScript syntax trees parse text method, the text that it was given to Lex. So let's go to the parse text method. The JavaScript syntax tree 
is going to return a JavaScript syntax unit, which will contain the root node that represents all of the syntax within this JavaScript text that we were given. And additionally, it's going to contain a diagnostic bag, which is going to contain the errors, the warnings, and all the various linting that we can see currently in the IDE. It's an equivalent idea, uh, these squigglies. So, Stringwalker is just an abstraction that I have going for iterating character by character. And now we are going to take a look at the main while loop of this parse text method. So in the previous video, we saw that we want strings, comments, and keywords. So let's just get started on converting the string pseudocode down to up here. So we're saying here, for the case of string, we know we're looking at a string if the current character is a double quote. So I'll start off just by writing pretty much exactly that. If, and this is an uh, actual C sharp, it's not a comment anymore. Uh, just in case you're not looking at your screen, I'm saying that. So string walker dots current character if string walker dot current character is equal to a double quote then something in regards to reading a string so reading a string I'll put as a uh, single line comment inside this if block for now and we need to make a constant out of this double quote character so I can find myself the JavaScript facts. I don't believe we have that made yet, so I'll make it right now. But I want to keep all of my constants in one similar location. So I'm going to make a class right now and have it be called JavaScript facts. Uh, hang on. OK. Uh, so I want to keep all of my constants in one spot. So I will make a JavaScript facts class in which that will be public, static, and contain various consts or read-only objects. So let's do that. I say JavaScript facts. I make that class. I make it public static class. The name is JavaScript facts. And we currently are in the situation where we want to uh, find all the strings. So we need a constant for what represents the beginning of a string. Therefore, I'll say public const char because the start of a string is just one character. One character. It's the double quote. So public const char. I will name it in all uppercase string underscore starting character. I'll set that equal to the double quote character. So I have double quote within the bounds of two single quotes for it to be a character. So, And then now I can reference my JavaScript facts in my text editor, uh, specifically the JavaScript syntax tree, because we're working on the parse text method. And we just wanted a constant instead of hard coding this double quote for knowing whether we are, we are looking at a string. So I paste over that hard coded value with the JavaScript facts dot string starting character. And now we can do the innards of this if block 
which would be to read in a string. So inside the if block, I will just invoke a separate method that will do the reading of the string and then return back with the string walker mutated as a result of me passing this invocation that I'll do. I'll pass it the string walker instance that I currently have so that it's shared state and that method returns and I get the updated character position that was moved to. So we'll see what I mean now. So if we see the start of a string, then we can say we invoke the method read string and read string is going to return a var java script string syntax is equal to the invocation of read string. I can then say on the next line document children dot add javascript string syntax and now all of the logic for reading the string is just internally being done by this method that we need to create now which is read string and read string internally will move our cursor perhaps not the cursor uh, being the word but the current character will be continually moved within the read string and when we return back into this top level while loop we will have that mutated state because we're sharing the same instance of string walker so let's do that so i pass in my string walker to the read string method so that we can share this state of where we are within the string as well i give in the diagnostic bag i can then create the method using a refactor for read string i wanted to return specifically a java script string syntax and we see that read string again it takes the current string walker that the outer loop is using as well as the outer loops diagnostic bag so that those two states are shared and we can actually move along the string and kind of have all the logic for reading a string in a separate method So let me go back to the Y loop at the very top and just make sure that everything is in place here. So we're going to parse the text. We need to keep track of all of the top level children of the document. We get the diagnostic bag. We get an instance of a string walker so that we can iterate character by character with some degree of an abstraction behind that. While I'm not at the end of the file, I continually go through this while loop to go through the entirety of the string text of this JavaScript text. And after every loop, I increment my character position by invoking stringwalker.consume. Stringwalker.consume, I do not like the name of it. I think it should be probably read character because in reality, it's returning the current character and incrementing your position index by one. So you're pointing at the next character now. It's moving you forward in the document, in, in, in the uh, string. So we see we're doing this first check here to get the strings. And if we see a double quote, we know it's the start of a string. So therefore, we invoke read string method and read string method will take in our string walker abstraction so that the position index that we end up at gets shared and it takes a diagnostic bag 
for any warnings or errors that may occur. We then add this JavaScript string syntax as a document child where document is going to be our top level root node that we iterate using a depth first search on that tree structure to find all of the various text editor text spans that we want the syntax highlight. So let's go to read string and inside of read string, one of the questions that we would need to answer is on what character are we expecting to enter this method? The reason for that is if I have var my string, or I suppose in JavaScript it would be let my string equal, and then I put double quotes. I also need to account for single quotes actually in, in JavaScript, but we'll take it one step at a time here. And we say let my string equals double quotes. Then we say some text. One of the things that needs to be documented for this read string method is does the read string method want to be invoked when the current character is the double quote or does it want to be invoked when the current character is the first character that starts the value of the string. So I like to always answer these questions of does this method want the current character to be the indicator that we are about to read a string or does it want it to be the first character value of the string? So I'll put a documentation comment at the top of this that says current character in, and then I put a colon. I'll put a line break, and then all the various states that this method is aware of as being valid when it comes to being allowed to invoke this method. That way, any callers know the state has to be the following for this method to work correctly without having to like uh, guess or take time to pull back the abstraction of the read string method. So if I hover over this, we see current character in, colon, and then the dash. So I can say, one of the valid states that you can enter into this method with would be, I'm going to do a uh, C and then reference the JavaScript facts dot string starting character. So if I then hover over the read string, the documentation comment says current character in colon line break. And then one of the ways that you can enter this method is if you see a string starting character. So if the current character is double quote, not the double, not the S, you want it to be the double quote. That's what I'm referring to. So let's continue. If it's the case that the character that we enter into this method with, that the current character is a double quote, well, do we want the syntax highlight the double quote the same color as the actual text within the double quote? So I'll type out in C sharp here, var 
example equals double quotes and then the text apple so in this specific situation writer is syntax highlighting the double quotes that delimitate the start and the end of the string they are coloring them the same color as the actual text value within those double quote delimiters perhaps it's the case that you might want to syntax highlight the double quotes as being yellow but have the text within it be this pink color so I want to go with having the text be syntax highlighted and the double quotes not be syntax highlighted because I might add in the future sort of this logic of string opening string end and you can syntax highlight those specifically so I will not be syntax highlighting the double quotes in this video I'll just do the value within them So if we're going to enter in on this double quote that I'm highlighting right now, I'm selecting that text so you can see it, the blue. All right, I had to sneeze. Uh, so I'll make this a comment so that we can continually refer back to it. But if we're going to come in here on a double quote and I'm saying I don't want to syntax highlight the double quote, I want the syntax highlight only the value within them, within those two double quote delimiters. Then my var starting position index is going to be equal to the string walker abstraction, whatever character position index it's at, which the property for that is named position index, but it's the position index of the current character. That's what that's referring to. Well, this position index refers to the quote, the double quote, that is to say, we don't want that, we want plus one. We want one further than that because we only want to syntax highlight the values in, this, in, in, in our case. And now we have the fact that the starting position index that we want the syntax highlight is this A character. And I'm currently selecting with my cursor and the shift key, because uh, I don't know how visible it is that I'm doing this because it's just one character, but this A will be syntax highlighted if we were to return at this point saying that this is our starting position index and we gave it an ending. So we have our A. What is the case that we need to stop and actually decide that we're done reading the value of the string? So that would be this uh, second double quote that we encounter because as long as we are reading in characters, such as what I'm highlighting right now with my selection, if it's not a double quote, then we continue. But then once we find that second double quote, we need to break out of this inner while loop that we're going to make and then return the JavaScript string syntax object. And there's various cases such as how JavaScript is going to have the single quote work for strings as well as whether or not uh, the, the string has a escaped double quote with a backslash double quote. If there's time to, to account for those things, I'll do them in this video. If not, it will be in the future. So, I have the starting position index, which is going to be the A character of this Apple text. And I could then say, inside of my read string method, I want to say while string walker uh, is not at the end of file. So, Specifically, I wrote while bang sign str string walker dot is EOF. So while string walker is not at the end of the file, then we can do our, our logic here, which would be the very first thing that we want to do is increment the position index so that 
instead of having the current character be this quote sign, which we came in at, came into this method at, we want to point at the A character. So how do we do that with my abstraction that I have here, this string walker? Well, we would discard the results of string walker dot consume. And again, I'm not in love with the API naming that I chose here. Also, the fact that this even returns a character is awkward. I do believe typically uh, what a lot of uh, API like this do is uh, string walker dot read character, I believe is the wording. And then maybe it returns true or false as to whether or not you had hit the end of the file. Something along those lines. Uh, what I mean to say is this is admittedly a bit awkward of an API to use, but I want to move my position index forward by one and it just happens to return the character that you were at prior to incrementing. So I just discard it. So it's a bit awkward of an API. I need to find time to work on it. But I, like I said, increment my position index. I'm now looking at the A character. When I say stringwalker.current character, that would be equal to A in this specific situation. So inside this while loop, what we, what we really want to do here, because we don't care about the text itself in terms of storing it, we don't want to store it. Uh, that would be a lot of memory usage. What we really want is just to know the start and the end. So if we see that the current character is a double quote, then we know that we're at the end. And like I said, we'll just do it quite simplistically at this point in time where we will not worry about escaped characters or the fact that a single quote could be used at the start and the end in JavaScript. And then in the future, I can extend this logic. So if stringwalker.current character is equal to a double quote character, then we want to break out of this while loop because we found the end of the string value. Well, we don't like uh, hard coding our values, so I will get rid of this hard coded value by going to JavaScript facts and creating a constant char in which it's going to be named string underscore ending character string underscore ending underscore character. The character will be a double quote. And this is something I don't know the answer to. Uh, I see here that the starting and the ending character of a string are both double quote. I don't know if it would be best to just say string boundary delimiter or something along those lines because the starting and the ending character are both double quote. So why duplicate uh, sort of having two constants when you might only need one? I don't know the answer to what would be the best choice there. So I'm gonna continue on here. Let me copy this constant we just made. And so we wanna break if stringwalker.current character is equal to JavaScript facts dot string ending character. And if it's the case that we broke uh, due to this if statement, then we have the starting and the ending position. However, I'm considering the idea that we may have broke out of the while loop because we found the end of the file. So if we find the end of the file as opposed to the 
end of the string, we want to report a diagnostic error that the end of file was unexpected. And then we could put a red squiggly at this starting position index and the ending position index saying uh, end of file was unexpected when they hover over that uh, squiggly. So let's do that. So if the string walker is at end of file as opposed to But as a comment here, just really quickly, if they're at the end of the file, the string walker, as opposed to the ending of a string character, then that, that's an issue. The string was never finished. So we could say diagnostic bag dot report end of file unexpected, which end of file unexpected is just a common thing that gets reported. So there's a sort of specific method for that in the diagnostic bag class. I'll F12 to this and scroll to the top real quick. Text editor diagnostic bag implements I enumerable of text editor diagnostic. Text editor diagnostic has diagnostic level enum as a string message and it has the text editor text span at which that diagnostic is occurring. And Real quick, the diagnostic level is hint, suggestion, warning, error, other. So you can, with your text editor diagnostic bag, you can report a error that's sort of more specific to your situation. But some things are very common. So there's just a bit sort of helpers. In, in a sense, helper methods for this stuff because end of file unexpected is very common. So there's a method for that. So let's go back to the read string method. And I want to report the end of file as unexpected. Well, it wants to know the text editor text span. And I need to uh, figure out exactly what I want to put for the end of file unexpected in terms of the starting and ending position. In short, the ending position could be the end of file or it could be the end of file plus one. And I just haven't figured out in my mind exactly where I want to go with that. Uh, sort of just like a plus one kind of situation, plus or minus one. But the starting index inclusive, I would say is the start of this string because the error is associated with this reading of the string. So you want to know it's associated here and that we were reading the string and we found the end of file. We were looking for the end of the string, the double quote to end it. So I give the starting position index. And this is a text editor text band that I'm making. So new text editor text span, starting position index of the string, and the ending index exclusive. So I can say here, string walker dot position index, which would be the, the marker of the end of the file. And the decoration byte that I would want to put here is, let's see what kind of decoration kinds we have for JavaScript. So in JavaScript decoration kind, which is an enum, we have the decoration kind none and the decoration kind keyword. Decoration kind is an enum because on the user interface, when you render out the characters of the text editor, any contiguous characters with the same decoration bytes get rendered within the same span. And that span gets a CSS class, which 
is gotten by mapping the decoration byte to the corresponding CSS class. JavaScript decoration kind allows you to make sense of your decoration bytes because an enum can be casted to a byte and a byte can be casted to an enum. So your JavaScript decoration kind enum acts as a uh, very clearly worded uh, way of looking at your bytes when you cast back and forth between a byte. So in here, I'll add one of my decoration kinds as error. And by doing that, I can now say this text editor text span is going to have a decoration of JavaScript decoration kind dot error. And then I can cast this enum value, this enum member as a byte. Next, regardless of whether uh, we find something wrong, I'm not quite sure it would imply in, in this situation because we're done with the file, but if you find that you have a malformed syntax, you typically want to match what you expected the syntax to be and then return along with the diagnostic. Otherwise, you would have cascading errors that were a result of an error 20 lines above you, and all of a sudden, everything is broken uh, when you can. You should uh, look for that. So, we reported that the end of the file was unexpected. Next, we can return new JavaScript string syntax. And JavaScript string syntax does not have a constructor. So I'm going to F12 to this class. And in the uh, file for this class, I will make a constructor. It's going to take a text editor text span and that is it so now i can control tab back to the javascript syntax tree and on the previous line prior to this return new javascript string syntax i want to make the instance of the text editor text span just on the line before so I don't instantiate two objects. It can be kind of hard to read sometimes. Uh, I do do it, but I try not to do it. So let's see, because it's easier to read if you don't. So var string text editor text span is equal to new text editor text span and we need the starting in inclu index inclusive the ending index exclusive and the decoration byte for when we render it so we give it the starting position index we give it the string walker dot position index which is in valid state it would be the position index of this ending quote character, the ending double quote character, if the state is valid. If the state's invalid, it would be the position index that represents the end of file. And then finally, the decoration byte. So let's go to JavaScript decoration kind and add another enum member for string and now I can say the decoration byte is JavaScript decoration kind dot string. 
and cast this as a byte. I return a new JavaScript string syntax given the string text editor text span. I go back up to the top of the file and that's over there. Okay, so we have this if statement inside the top level while loop of the JavaScript syntax tree parse text method. How do we go about syntax highlighting a string that shows up on the UI given the fact that we have this tree data structure which has a root node of the JavaScript document syntax, that's the root node. How do we get from this tree data structure to actually applying the CSS class on the UI? So this if statement makes the tree structure. It puts all the strings that we find into that, into that uh, tree structure. Well, then let's go to the end of the while loop. So let's say that we found the end of the file now. So we found the text, perhaps it was apple in strings, in quotes. Well, after this while loop is done and we find all of our string values and we keep track of all of their text editor text bands, the starting position character index and the ending, we then go on to make a JavaScript document syntax, which is the root node of the tree data structure that contains all the syntax regarding this JavaScript text that was given to us. The JavaScript document syntax has a text editor text span from index zero to the end of the file because the JavaScript document syntax is the file itself. It gets no decoration. There's no syntax highlighting being done for the document because that's everything. The JavaScript document syntax has as part of its constructor, if I F12 to it, it takes in an immutable array of I JavaScript syntax named children. And this will give you all of the immediate children of the root node. And then you can return a new JavaScript syntax unit and this JavaScript syntax unit, I'll F12 to it, it encapsulates uh, two properties, which are the JavaScript document syntax, in other words, the root node, and the text editor diagnostic bag, in other words, sort of the, the linting, the squigglies that you see. So let's go to the lexer and get this uh, string rendered out the syntax highlighting for the string, render it out. So we get the JavaScript syntax unit and I'm within the uh, text editor JavaScript lexer, the lex method. The first thing that's done here is an invocation of parse text, which is what we just wrote in the JavaScript syntax tree. We grab the result of that, which is the JavaScript syntax unit and now we need to visit the root node and uh, get all of the comment syntax that we find. And specifically, it would be, in our case, JavaScript string syntax. I was looking at this comment, which is not exactly what we're doing, but just like different items. So. We don't have a JavaScript syntax walker class created yet, but the JavaScript syntax walker will allow you to uh, traverse your tree data structure, which contains all the syntax. And then you can put all of the JavaScript string syntax into one list as you find them. So let's do that. 
I make a new class here. JavaScript syntax walker is the name of this class. And I need a property on this class, which is going to be a list of JavaScript string syntax. And the name of this property is JavaScript string syntaxes. This is equal to a new list. And it is get only. The JavaScript syntax walker will visit the root node. So let's make a visit method, public void visit. The visit method needs to be invoked recursively on every child for every child's child. I didn't say that very well, but um, what I'm trying to get at is, uh, I did not word that very well, but every syntax implements I JavaScript syntax. So if I look at, for example, JavaScript string syntax, it implements I JavaScript syntax as well. If I look at JavaScript document syntax, it also implements I JavaScript syntax. Well, I go back to the walker at this point, and we need to start this recursive loop by invoking visit on the root node. The root node is JavaScript document syntax. It implements this interface I JavaScript syntax. Therefore, we can use I JavaScript syntax as this unifying uh, type that we can have as the argument type for the visit method. So public void visit I JavaScript syntax and we will name the parameter node because it's a node of the tree. And then what we need to do is do a depth first search. So every time that we invoke visit, we iterate over that node's children. So node which for child in node dot children for each for child in node dot children we would just invoke visit on the child so that way we get the depth first search after this for each loop we could do a switch statement so that we can efficiently figure out the syntax kind of this node that we're looking at and determine what list of syntax to add this node to so that we can read that and then use it when we run through the UI. So we do a switch over node dot JavaScript syntax kind. JavaScript syntax kind is an enum. If I F12 to it, there's comment, string, keyword, document. So case JavaScript syntax kind dot string. What are we going to do? I'll type break first, but prior to breaking, we need to visit a JavaScript string syntax specifically. So the initial invocation is on visit, but then once you see a string, then you invoke more specifically a visit JavaScript string syntax. This method would need to be passed into it, the node, and have the node be casted as a JavaScript string syntax. I can refactor to create this method. And I now 
am able to add to this list of JavaScript string syntax, which I have as a property. So I copy this over here. And then I add to this list of my string syntaxes the node that I am invoking JavaScript string syntax with. So now we have a list containing all of the strings. I go back to the lexer and I can make an instance of a JavaScript syntax walker. var JavaScript syntax walker equals new JavaScript syntax walker. And then I want to say here JavaScript syntax walker dot visit the root node that contains all the syntax for this JavaScript text, which would be the JavaScript syntax unit dot JavaScript document syntax node. By invoking the visit method, JavaScript syntax walker will now have populated the JavaScript string syntaxes list. So let me go ahead and delete a good part of this comment here. At this point, we now have populated that list of the string syntaxes, so we can return those string syntaxes. We do a dot select with link and pull out their corresponding text editor text spans. We can then return that with dot two immutable array so that we match the data type that, that the return is expecting us to return. As well, I need to wrap it in task dot from result because I marked the method as async, but I'm not actually making use of that. So let me do a task dot from result and I need the keyword return. I have to go to the bathroom. I'll be like, well, I'm going to pause the video. So be right back. Okay. I am back and I want to get rendered onto the UI, the syntax highlighting for the strings at this point, because we just finished returning from the iLexer implementation, all of the text editor text spans that correlate to a string. So let's see. We need to map from the string decoration byte to a CSS class. And for that reasoning, I can go to JavaScript. Okay, the name of the file is text editor JavaScript decoration mapper. This will take in to the method named byte, named map a byte, which is going to be named decoration byte, that parameter, and then it returns back a string. This string you'll be able to find in the .css file for the razor lib, and it will contain perhaps setting the color of the text to red. So. So the first thing that we do in this method for map is we cast the decoration byte as a JavaScript decoration kind enum so that we can make sense of it. And in JavaScript decoration kind enum, we have the string member available to us. Otherwise we would have just added it. So. I go down to this switch statement, the switch expression, and I need to add another part 
to this expression in which I take the case of JavaScript decoration kind dot string and I map that to BTE underscore string dash literal, I believe is what my CSS class is. I'll check that in a second. And BTE underscore is just a sort of pseudo namespace that I do to make sure I don't clobber anyone else's CSS. Uh, it's for Blazor Text Editor, BTE. So let me check to make sure that this is the correct CSS class. I'll control shift F to search in the entirety of the solution. I'll paste in what I had copied and I can see here that BTE underscore string dash literal gets the color of this CSS variable. So it is correct. And I'm going to run the server side application and take a look. Uh, starting up here. I go to JavaScript and we don't have any syntax highlighting because we uh, are not accounting for keywords anymore. We would have to add that logic in. So let's type a string and specifically we covered the double quote string. So let my string equals and I'll type Bob and then I hit the space character and uh, I hope this is clear on video but it's this pink kind of color let me see if I can find the uh, yeah so here's Visual Studio's color theme for dark uh, hopefully that comes up better let me make another one my rather long string and so you can see we've got the strings so let me go ahead and copy and paste these strings that I just wrote here into the live demo and we'll see that it's not gonna work so which, which is the correct behavior so here's the live demo let me control F5 just to get a nice clean slate. I will put it to the Visual Studio Dark theme, clone. We see the keywords because uh, they're on this one, but if I paste in those two strings that I just wrote using the local version, we see it's not getting highlighted in the demo. That's because we just added that. So I've got to the local one, here we go. We see that the strings work. I go to the live demo and it, it's not showing up with the strings. I'm gonna end the video here. And so thank you and goodbye.